This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1917. Understand Food Labels and Identify Diet Killers by Dr. Scott Schreiber with DIYactive.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Saturday. Thank you so much for being here and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs all for free. And don't forget, we have a few shows where we do this very same thing, covering a bunch of different topics. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in any podcast app to find them. And with that, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. Understand Food Labels and Identify Diet Killers by Dr. Scott Schreiber with DIYactive.com. Understanding Confusing Food Labels Government-mandated nutrition labels can tell us a lot about the food we are about to eat, but do you completely understand them? Check out these must-know tips from the doctor. Why are food labels so confusing? Food labels are a government mandate to provide consumers with information to make informed choices regarding their food. That being said, the average consumer has very little education deciphering the mumbo-jumbo. They are updated periodically and have been an area of concern among nutrition professionals regarding what nutrition information is available and the manipulation of that information. Serving size. The serving size is located near the top of the label. It contains the recommended servings and the total number of servings per container. Be sure to look at this. Oftentimes, the serving sizes are made intentionally small to make the product appear healthier than it actually is. How many people eat half a bag of chips or half a candy bar? Take a look at some of the labels and you'll see. It's pretty deceptive and it's all legal. Calories. Calories are another item listed on food labels close to the top. Remember that this number is calories per serving, not calories for the whole package. Remember that serving size can be manipulated, so it's imperative that you read this and do the math to get accurate numbers. Included in the calorie section are calories from fat. This is an outdated calculation added to the food labels when it was thought that a high-fat diet was responsible for obesity. Current research is pointing to sugar rather than fat as a major contributor. Nutrients. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, the nutrient section of the food label is broken down to limit these and get enough of these subsections. Total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium are listed as well as the percentage of the daily values. Dietary fiber, calcium, and iron are required to be on the labels. In my opinion, the selections for both are outdated and need a complete overhaul. Research has shown that total fat is not indicative of poor health. What we now know is the fat-free craze brought in foods that traded fat for sugar, increasing the risk for obesity, diabetes, certain cancers, heart disease, and on and on. Eating adequate amounts of healthy fats is beneficial for your health. Trans fat, for example, is still known to be a carcinogen, meaning it's cancer-causing, and it's artery-clogging. It is a man-made fat and rarely occurs in nature. In the past, dietary cholesterol was thought to elevate total cholesterol in the bloodstream. Studies are now finding this may not be true, but yet cholesterol still remains on the label. Excessive sodium is still regarded as negative. Other nutrients. Dietary fiber, calcium, and iron were chosen as items to be labeled because it was believed that the American population was deficient. Vitamins A and C, however, are no longer needed to be listed on the label because most Americans are no longer deficient in vitamins A or C. It is true that most Americans do not consume enough dietary fiber. Protein is also listed, but has no percent daily value. The United States government does not believe that high protein intake is a public health concern. However, many health experts, including myself, disagree. Total carbohydrate is noted with a percent daily value. This includes dietary fiber and sugar. But now, luckily, there is a differentiation between naturally occurring and added sugars. Calcium was put on the label as a public health measure as it was thought a deficiency caused osteoporosis. This is helpful, but it should not be the sole treatment for the prevention of osteoporosis. The percent daily values are based on a 2,000 calorie a day diet, which is based on recommended dietary allowances. The recommended dietary allowances are general guidelines that are based on a 150 pound male. How many males do you know that are exactly 150 pounds? These also do not take into consideration females or those that are non-binary. 
So needless to say, these are outdated. The footnote on the label describes what's recommended by the government as healthy. These numbers include total fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carbohydrate, and dietary fiber. Good news. Well, sort of. Recently, the United States government decided that a food label update was necessary. Much of the information is the same. However, there are some small changes that are worth mentioning. The serving size is printed in a larger font, which makes it easier for the consumer to see. However, food manufacturers will still be allowed to manipulate serving sizes to make their products seem healthier than they actually are. Calories are in a bolder typeface. This is helpful, but weight management is not about the calories, it's more about where they came from. The percent daily value has been updated too. However, they still mislead the consumer, as many of us require more than 2,000 calories. The nutrients required to be listed have also been changed. For example, potassium now has to be included, along with vitamin D. Calcium and iron are still present. The most glaring change is that, again, total added sugars have been included. This is a great benefit to the consumer since added sugars believed to be the source of many health conditions. Wrap up. Food labels can be misleading and deceptive. However, with the new changes and a little education, you can get through the misinformation. You just listened to the post titled Understand Food Labels and Identify Diet Killers by Dr. Scott Schreiber with DIYactive.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Not only may most average consumers find the food label confusing, but even when I was in school studying to be a dietitian, I found it confusing. I felt like you had to be a math major to figure out what it all meant. But it turns out, with just a few shortcuts, we can make much more sense of it. And thanks to Dr. Schreiber's suggestions, we can ignore those things that don't really matter as much to us and our health and focus on those facts that do. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you're having a great weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Sunday show and where your optimal life awaits.